homies, welcome back to the Disaster Network, where I go to the hardware store six times in one day because I think that my memory is better than my dad's, and it's not. The last thing he told me was, Tania, did you make a list? And I said, yeah, I made a list in my head. Clearly, my head doesn't have a brain in it. I went to the hardware store six times. Today is such an exciting video. This is the first real piece of furniture that I'm using inside of my home. I am definitely a Scandinavian industrial minimalist. I figured I would make one piece a centerpiece and I decided it would be the media console. I wanted something that was a statement piece I could afford and that I actually liked. So I decided to just go for it. These plans are not my own. I actually got them from another YouTuber. Her name is Shara and her channel is Shara's Woodshop Diaries. And if you want to make this media console, I strongly suggest that you go over to her channel and check out the video because I cannot explain how to make this as well as she does. So. I will link all of her information in the description box below so that you can check it out. If you want to make this console, check out Shara's video, watch the rest of this video. I worked really hard on this project. If you do like it, don't forget to click the like button down below and subscribe if you like the shenanigans. Let's make this thing. Here's what you're going to need. A pencil, four pairs of overlay cabinet hinges for the doors, non-foaming wood glue, tape is optional, a sander for some epic sawdust footage, measuring tape of course, and furniture legs if you don't want to build your own, a pocket hole jig and safety equipment, a few extra hands, a brad nailer or heavy duty stapler, two inch wood screws, and a drill. Here's the thing, this is all personal. Paint color is an intimate decision. Get messy and choose what suits your vibe. I purchased flat paint and a shellac tinted primer, but of course you can use the cult favorite bin if you have it. A table saw for rip and cross cuts. I don't have one, so I used a circular saw jig. Wood stain of your choice? The star of the show is this amazing stencil. A foam roller with a few extras. Or if you have a spray gun, go for it. Every time I go to my local lumberyard, I feel like I'm grocery shopping for wood. For the frame, you're going to need one and a half sheets of three quarter inch plywood and one sheet of quarter inch ply or MDF for the back. This is optional, but if you are struggling with plywood tear out, use a strip of tape along the edge before you cross cut. For the body of the cabinet, I used my Craig rip cut to rip the sheet into three strips, two 16 inches wide and one 15 and a quarter inch wide. Then I trimmed them down per the cut list. Once all of the pieces were cut, I began the frame assembly with three quarter inch pocket holes and one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws. I assembled the bottom pieces to the sides first. Then I added the top of the frame. For a cleaner looking project, I covered the pocket holes by gluing in the plugs. Next, I used edge banding to conceal the plywood edges. To create the optional floating frame, I used five of the two and a half inch wide strips, three quarter inch pocket holes and one and a quarter inch screws to assemble it. This insert will make the top look like it's floating over the frame of the cabinet. Once you've added all of the pocket holes, it's time to assemble the pieces into a rectangle. Here is where I made a big mistake. I wanted to show you guys how important this step is so that you don't have to redo it like I did. Ensure the right panel is set on the outside of the longer panels as seen in the diagram. I mistakenly set my short panel on the inside, 
which extended the overall width of the insert. If the insert is too wide, it won't be able to attach to the narrower frame. Now to the fun part. I chose to prime my cabinet frame with a tinted primer first. I would strongly suggest using the bin primer regardless of the color that you choose if you don't want the grain to show through the paint. Sherman Williams Tricorn Black, the best black ever, is always my go-to. I decided to pull out my spray gun for this because it makes life so much easier. After both coats were dry, I attached the top of the cabinet from underneath with wood screws and then I went ahead and painted the top as well. Let's make some doors. I used another sheet of the 3 quarter inch plywood to cut four identical doors out of it. I cut the strips to 21 and a quarter inches by 17 and a half inches with my circular saw and jig. Once I cut the four doors, I preconditioned them with Minwax pre-stain conditioner for an even absorption of wood stain. I decided to go a little lighter than the mid-century modern headboard that I made a few weeks ago. If you haven't seen that video, I've linked it in the above card for you if you'd like to check it out. I chose special walnut for this special project. Feel free to choose whatever color story best suits your vibe. Once the stained doors have dried, I used my Forstner bit to drill cup holes for the door hinges. For the front of the doors, I decided to use Simply White by Benjamin Moore as the pattern contrast color. I couldn't find the brass door handles that I wanted, so I just purchased black ones and I painted them. While your handles are drying, it's time to prep for your door stenciling. This part of the project will push every single last one of your buttons if you are a perfectionist. First, you need to align the stencil to ensure the pattern is even. To do this, I found the middle of the end door and made a mark. Next, I set the center design of the stencil on the middle mark that I made on the door. Take your stencil to the door so it stays in place. The secret to clean lines from stenciling is to never move your stencil. Also, use as little paint as possible and take your time. The day I chose to stencil felt like a hurricane was blowing in my backyard. Save yourself the additional stress and try not to be as silly as I was. Also, keep some paper towels handy so that you can thin out your paint off of your roller brush. tape you're using won't leave a residue on your newly stained doors. And try not to roll off of the stencil because you're going to be very angry at yourself. Speaking from experience. It's not a must that you wait until the paint fully dries before removing the stencil. I waited about three to five minutes before moving on to the next sequence. To ensure I got the correct continuous pattern, I placed the adjacent door next to the completed door that I just stenciled and continued to follow the pattern. It is important, however, that when you are ready to remove it, try your best to peel it cleanly in an upward direction to eliminate the chance of smearing the wet paint. Now, how is this thing going to stand up? I purchased wood tapered legs, but go ahead and spread your wings if you'd like to make legs of your own. I decided to paint the tips of the legs for some visual interest, and it's also a small custom detail to something that I made on my own. Once the legs are attached, you're all done. No way. You guys. I can't believe this project is finally finished. It's definitely a statement piece for me and I hope you guys absolutely love it just as much as I do. I was so close to painting the entire thing black but I'm so happy I decided to stain the doors and add a pattern. I also appreciate the size of this piece. It's six feet long and almost two and a half feet tall. I added shelves for storage and to hide things away like coffee table books and accent pillows because I will never admit that I have too many. If you're a neutral obsessed minimalist like I am and you're looking to dress up the clean lines in your home, this piece is definitely a conversation starter. I hope that you guys liked the video. If you did like it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. It's free. 
And don't forget to check out Shara's video. All of the information will be in the description box below. Until the next disaster video, bye!